Hey guys, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and I'm trying something a little different today. I'm doing a little video vlog from my workshop out here in the garage. Uh, I got the idea from another Patreon that I follow called Punish Props Academy. Uh, Bill and Britt Duran, they make all kinds of cool uh, costumes and props from movies and video games and they show off all sorts of maker techniques especially like foam smithing, 3D printing, painting and weathering, all kinds of stuff. It's really fun to watch. They make great videos, really nice editing and production. Um, I'm not going to have any of that, but I'm going to show you what I'm working on here on my workbench. And uh, I just, I like the way they make these videos just for their patrons. It, uh, it feels like a nice, uh, something special just for them and a thank you for supporting them. So I'm going to try that and uh, let's see what I got going on my workbench here. All right, let's see what's going on on the workbench today. Um, I haven't been painting a lot in the last couple of months because uh, mostly because of these prehistoric trees and plants. They took a long time, but I sure am happy with the results. They look so natural and a lot of nice details. I, I'm really happy. I learned some nice tricks in ZBrush while working on them. It was a fun project. Especially, I like these Williamsonia. They just came out just like I had pictured in my head, which doesn't happen often. Usually, I find things, you know, that as I work um, that I want to make. But this time, I planned ahead, and it came out nice. <laughs> the last thing I actually painted fully was this Cycad from several months ago. I'm happy with this one. It's the orange and green and purple. Really works nice together. Came out a little darker than I like, which is pretty much par for the course for me. I, I use too much wash and not enough care when I apply it. I gotta learn. I gotta learn not to do that. <laughs> this is one I just kind of keep around this splash pillar. I keep around for when I have extra paint on the palette. Uh, I have several different models around that I kind of keep for that purpose and just kind of work on them slowly but uh, it's starting to look like something and I'm planning on putting like a coastline wave texture between the the water and the rock parts I broke this like three times because I dropped it <laughs> so many times I'm too clumsy for this <laughs> hobby <clears throat> excuse me Speaking of clumsy, now I gotta paint Warhammer figures. <laughs> I've been um, researching Warhammer because I think my plants and terrain would be a great fit for the game. I know uh, some people use a lot of terrain for it. Uh, so I started researching it and then I started watching some battle report videos and then I started watching some more and getting really into it. So this weekend I got big a box of figures in the mail and I'm putting them all together I'm actually having quite a bit of fun putting them together they do an amazing job uh, with the design of how these things go together and the tolerances on this plastic is much better than the 3d printed stuff it must be but anyway so now I got another time-consuming hobby <laughs> but I'm actually really looking forward to playing uh, it's a really interesting game, especially if you play a lot of games like I do. Oh yeah, and I got this uh, dried preserved moss. I found this in one of our old crafting drawers, and I know that people use this for their terrains sometimes, so I gave it a try, and it works, it works pretty cool. I mean, I just kind of flopped this all on here with a little more care. It would really look uh, like some real foliage. I'm going to try painting this next time I get the airbrush fired up. These bare branches turned out good. These little sections could <laughs> pass as trees almost just by themselves. I have so many unpainted models from the recent months. I, like these Lofo Fightum. I can't wait to paint these. I just haven't had time. I mean, I got these, I got these, I got these. <laughs> I literally have a big bucket full of the ones from uh, the 
uh, my Kickstarter, all of the extra variations and stuff, I never painted all of those. It's actually one reason I want to start making some more hammer terrain. I figure maybe I can use all of this stuff for some pre-made terrain. So yeah, that's what I got on my workbench today. Um, let's go back on the computer and uh, we'll look at the research I've been doing for the Underdark theme this month. Okay, and on to the next step. We've got the Underdark giant mushrooms and from the voting it looks like y'all certainly want some terrain to go with those mushrooms so that'll be fun too i'm looking forward to this month there's there's so much good concept art and stories and information to draw from from this stuff i didn't realize that underdark was such a big deal in dnd i mean i played dnd for a long time but only sporadically over the years and i guess I just had filed it under some sort of spooky dark place that I wasn't really interested in. But after reading through this Into Darkness campaign book, I, I've got to change my mind. There's all kinds of cool stuff in the Underdark, and I'm I'm excited to make it. Even this this one page uh, that I mentioned in one of the posts earlier this week, there's like a dozen different mushrooms that can keep me busy for a couple months just from these cool descriptions. I really like Chris Perkins as a DM, and I could, I could see his touch all over this adventure book. I'm having fun reading through it. So yeah, we'll have lots of good mushrooms coming up. And while I was thinking of the terrain, I realized um, that one of my old fractal videos is kind of a perfect fit for the Underdark. It's kind of moody and dark and lots of arcane shapes and... Uh, mysterious spaces so um, I think I'll be able to kind of mine this specific animation for some really cool cave shapes that are 3d printable especially what came to mind immediately was this this weird thing here this technically kind of magnetic field line thing <laughs> it's always been kind of spooky and weird looking to me but that seems to fit the theme really well i actually already did a test of that shape today and i was going to try to print it but this particular pass is just too crazy i didn't feel like trying to place 200 different manual supports <laughs> mostly on the inside of this thing but uh, uh it'll be fun to have a shape like this as a set piece that's for sure i'll be working on if not this one something similar i think i have a little turntable movie i made play I actually featured the same shape in uh, one of my video games crash lander you could fly the little ship around here while you're looking for places to land. <laughs> I've done, I spent a lot of time making those fractal animations and just exploring those 3D fractals in general. So I kind of have like a catalog of shapes in my brain of stuff that I worked on before. And a lot of times they kind of come in handy for other projects. Here's another one I found this morning. I like these kind of jagged ripples on the surface leading up to these shapes. This could be another possible set piece. I'd also like to attempt to make some sort of cave where you take the top off and the minis would have room uh, inside to have an encounter. Um, that seems like a big undertaking though, so I don't know if I could do that this month, but I'm going to attempt it and see what kind of trouble i'd be getting in my thing getting myself into there but it sounds cool <laughs> but we'll definitely have some sort of uh, weird fractally thing like this some stalactites and stalagmites maybe some things that scatter around a board to suggest a cave um, rather than a full cave itself so yeah we've got plenty of inspiration this month uh, the next step will be to start sketching out some of these mushroom shapes 
and continue working on uh, these fractal cave things. I find a shape that we can print. Boy, this one's cool too. I like the ones with the little arches. Um, but anyway, uh, here's this is the first of these what's on my workbench videos, and I hope you find them interesting or fun. Um, I really do appreciate the support from all my patrons. I really am having fun uh, with this. I can't believe it's been six months already, but uh, it's really fun to have some people to bounce ideas off of and uh, get your suggestions, get those creative ideas flowing. It makes it a lot easier to come up with all this stuff. And then uh, I know that there's the people who are interested in what I'm making, so it makes it a lot easier. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.